LSU men's basketball goes down to the wire on Saturday with an overtime finish in Rupp Arena against Kentucky. And the baseball team continues their hot start to the season with another weekend sweep. And a big name Tiger makes a splash at this year's NFL Combine. This is the Sports Desk and it starts right now. Let's go! Hello and welcome to the Sports Desk. I'm Morgan Beard. And I'm Kelsey Winger. Morgan, the LSU basketball team has had a knack for playing these big opponents really well in their home. That's but right. that didn't, there was no difference on Saturday. Isn't that Kelsey, right? unfortunately not. There wasn't a much difference from the trends that have been the story for the season for the basketball team all season long. One, playing up to the competition, and the other, struggling to notch a W outside of Baton Rouge. But here we go. We're going to see Anthony Hickey right here. He's from Kentucky, Mr. Basketball in high school. We know it's a big game from him. But we start with Kentucky with an easy transition bucket for Andrew Harrison, a thing that happened all game for the Wildcats. That was your defense. Couldn't stop very much of anything. Kentucky pushing the pace again, but a sloppy pass falls in the hands of Willie Cauley-Stein for the Willie Cauley slam right there down the throat of LSU's defense. But in the, later in the first half, Siobhan Coleman receives the ball off of a swing pass. Nice three right there. Siobhan Coleman's done that all year for the Tigers. John Calipari, not happy, but when is he ever? But here it is, clutch time. Second half, one minute to go. Anthony Hickey jacks up the shot, and it goes down. LSU up by one here in Kentucky. But after a couple free throws, Kentucky ties the ball back up. Anthony Hickey with another shot, throws it back up, and it clanks off the rim. Overtime we go in Lexington. Hickey trying to make a big statement in his home state. But here we go, play of the game right here. LSU gets a stop, falls in the hand of their superstar, Julius Randle. He puts it back in there. Kentucky with a one-point lead. LSU, no timeouts. Johnny Jones used them a little too early. Andre Stringer turns it over. Kentucky steals a game in their home arena, 77-76. LSU falls 7-7 seven seven in the SEC. And it was the fourth loss of the season by two or less points for the Tigers. And earlier today, players Andre Stringer and Anthony Hickey talked about what made the difference in Lexington. I miss a free throw, turn the ball over a couple times. Um, just critical plays that, you know, we weren't, we weren't, we didn't make or I didn't make, things like that. Lost my last second shot. Um, we go down to score, a couple seconds left, they come down to score, it's pretty tough. So it was probably the toughest loss. LSU has four more games remaining in the regular season, with the next one being a chance at revenge against Texas A&M here at home inside the PMAC this Wednesday night. LSU lost the first game to the Aggies in College Station on February 12th. On to the diamond now. The LSU baseball team is already getting noticed for their hot start to this season. It was announced today that LSU has been moved to the number one spot in the Collegiate Baseball Magazine's weekly rankings. The Tigers are 7-0 so far this season following notable victories over Southeastern and Virginia Tech, among others. One big reason for the Tigers' success has been star pitcher Aaron Nola, who was just named one of the Collegiate Baseball Players of the Week. Nola is 2-0 on the season with no earned runs and is coming off a seven-inning no-hitter in his last outing. The Tigers take on the Raging Cajuns from down the road tomorrow at Alec Box Stadium. The first pitch is set for 6.30 p.m. Meanwhile, LSU football is in the middle of the offseason, but for the NFL, scouts and GMs are hard at work trying to decide to, who to draft this upcoming May. And one guy already high on a lot of teams' list is former LSU wide receiver Odell Beckham Jr., who may have jumped even higher after improving his dra draft stock with a 4 4 7 40 time. After the combine, Beckham is now expected to be a first-round selection. Meanwhile, Beckham's counterpart, fellow wide receiver Jarvis Landry, had a disappointing 40 time of a low 4.77, although it was known Landry is currently dealing with hamstring and calf injuries. Landry, along with other Tigers, will have another shot to improve those times at the LSU Tigers Pro Day here on campus April 9th. In women's basketball now, the Lady Tigers have hit a major low point on the season, both on the court and off. Following their fourth straight loss of the season on Sunday, senior guard Janine Ke Kenny and head coach Nikki Caldwell said a lack of team chemistry is the source of their struggles. The whole team chemistry is thing is, is very, <laughs> it's not talked about enough. We need to come together. We need to find a way because uh, losing is not an option anymore. You know, chemistry is about spending time with someone um, and not just in practice. <laughs> we got to go back 
to realizing why we're here. The Lady Tigers hope to fix their problems in time for Thursday as the 10th ranked Lady Volunteers of Tennessee visit Baton Rouge. Now it's time to make the two sponsors we have happy as we take a short break here on the Sports Desk. Don't go anywhere, we'll be right back and take a trip to the Lombardi Lounge. Welcome back to the Sports Desk. The best drivers in NASCAR gathered in Daytona Beach, Florida for the 2014 Daytona 500 on Sunday. And in this week's Lombardi Lounge segment, Johnny Lombardi takes us through NASCAR's biggest race of the season. Johnny, take it away like you always do. Thanks, guys, and welcome to this week's edition of the Lombardi Lounge. I just want to take a minute and note that I am wearing blue and gold in honor of my high school, Lions Township Girls Gymnastics, back-to-back -back state champs, number one in the nation. So that's my shout-out for this week. In every other sport, the season's biggest games are played at the end of the season, culminating in a title game or title series. In NASCAR, it's different. The series' biggest race is actually its first, the Daytona 500. And this year, the 56th edition of the Great American Race did not disappoint. Daytona, Florida, the race started under sunny skies and 38 laps were run until rain hit the coastal Florida town. And you see here, tornado warnings actually, and thunderstorm warnings. It was a six hour and 21 minute delay. The race was moved from Sunday afternoon into prime time under the lights in Daytona. We'll see after six hours, the car's getting uncovered. Here is the drivers getting set to go back racing with just over 140 laps to go. Right here, Carl Edwards leading the pack and there's a big crash here as they after they came out from the rain delay, there was a lot of action, and finally the cars just could not handle it anymore. You see Danica Patrick there with the crash, the female who won, the first female to win a pole in NASCAR, and the first female to lead a lap in the, in the Daytona 500. You see two-time Daytona 500 winner Michael Waltrip was caught up in the accident. Danica Patrick right there, as we'll see in the replay, it was Kevin Harvick in the Budweiser car getting loose. Brian Scott, Eric Almirola. Danica Patrick almost misses it right there, but she's caught up. Takes a hard lick in the outside wall where there's no safer barrier. Daytona, or Danica, obviously very dejected after having such a strong performance in last year's race. Here we go, white flag final lap. Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the lead with Denny Hamlin, Jeff Gordon, and Brad Keselowski following. A big crash behind him, but they're going to race to the checkered flag. Denny Hamlin tries to make a move, but it's going to be Dale Earnhardt Jr., the most famous name in NASCAR, winning his second Daytona 500, his first since 2004 as he comes to victory lane for the celebration. And after the race, Fox Sports Steve Burns caught up with Dale Earnhardt Jr. in Daytona's victory lane. Yeah, I think so. Man, this, uh, winning this race uh, is the greatest feeling that you can feel in this sport. And uh, aside from obviously accepting the trophy for the championship, I didn't know if I'd ever get a chance to feel that again. And it feels just as good, if not better than the first, because of how hard we tried year after year after year, running second all them years. All right, well, Johnny, we know that we don't talk about NASCAR that much here at the Sports Desk. And, Johnny, we did a little research of our own to figure out why you, of all people, are a fan of NASCAR. So we can pull these. Oh, uh, look at, <laughs> look look at, at the little, little, little Johnny with his sock and sandal game right there. That's oh, me and my yay. uncle at Chicagoland Speedway. Uh, that previous picture was me with Jeff Gordon. You can see me with That's all my favorite. drawings. I was really artistic. Look at you. such an artist. Yeah. And then that's me and my dad with Dale Earnhardt's car. So NASCAR for me... My love for NASCAR really comes from my family. My dad, aunt, and uncle were big fans when I was really little, and it was a way for me to spend time with my dad. Every Sunday we'd watch the races, and I just got into it, and I still am today. It's not something I talk about a lot because yeah. people make fun of me, but it's just some little, little tidbit about Johnny Lombardi that you know, not a lot of people you know. You know what I say? You're Johnny Lombardi, so if you like NASCAR, you can like NASCAR. You <laughs> hey, can do what you want. As long as we get pictures like that every time you want to talk about it. Hey, <laughs> I'll, I'll supply as many pictures as y'all want. There's and some as, more classics out there. And as long as you're in the Lombardi Lounge with, you know, a family photo album time, that, that's, you know, I'm happy with that too. But Johnny, thanks for giving us the only NASCAR coverage we'll see you all year. It's really appreciated. We'll be right back to close out the sports desk, and don't worry, there won't be any more NASCAR. <laughs> Welcome back to the Sports Test. Now, guys, if, you, if you've ever been to a sporting event, you always know that in the middle of a timeout or commercial, you know, any fan will do anything to get on the big screen, right? <laughs> Usually. So, when I was covering the Pelicans game, I grabbed oh, a little bit of video. Gosh. And I want to see, look, this fan, he's being normal, you know, dancing. Okay, kind of turns around. Okay, okay. Look, what I look what I saw. Look okay, around. okay. <laughs> what is Get this? Look at her. Going, wait, 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 oh, <laughs> no. This is PG, folks. Look, this is <laughs> I'm sorry, Mom. This is I'm family sorry, television. Mom. Come on, Morgan. I didn't know if I could actually air that at all, but I just wanted to see. What's the craziest thing you've seen? Real quick. Craziest thing you've seen in a game, or was that it? 
God. That was it. That I, can't, I can't it. even think right now. I think that had to be it. <laughs> anyway, on that note, unfortunately, really unfortunate that we're out of time, but it's time to say goodbye. Make sure to like us here on Facebook and follow us on Twitter for the latest news at TTV underscore sports. And you can catch us next week here on Campus Channel 75 at 6 o'clock. For Morgan Beard yeah. and Johnny Lombardi, I'm Kelsey Winger. See you next time. Boom.